This is an introductory video to the River Bathymetry Toolkit detrending feature. Um, I've opened up ArcMap here and I've loaded a DEM for the Bear Valley Creek in Idaho. Uh, it's a river, it starts out in a meandering floodplain and then descends down into a canyon reach uh, on the eastern side here. I've also loaded the River Bathymetry Toolkit toolbar up here. Um, and for my display of the DEM, I've just uh, I've color toned the DEM and uh, put a whole shade underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and show um, the Bankful Detrending tool. Uh, the goal of this tool is really to take out the uh, overall valley slope of the DEM. So I want to maintain the high frequency features of pools and riffles and any little topographic details, but I want to take out the overall downstream stream loss of elevation. And once I've done this, I can then go on and actually use uh, other tools in the RBT, uh, the Bankful tool, to actually raise and lower the water level in that kind of flat uh, digital elevation model that's kind of like a pool table or like a snooker table. So I can go ahead here and open up the detrending tool. And what I'll do is I'll uh, explain these inputs once I've started it running here. I'm going to pick my DEM and choose the defaults for the other features. So I'm going to set that going. Um, the inputs for this tool, uh, as I mentioned, it takes a raw DEM. Uh, this DEM is projected and in uh, meters. The channel type, there are three different types uh, you can choose from. I'm choosing step pool. And what this input does is it, it tweaks the algorithms to try to capture the bankful elevation of your river. And uh, depending on which type you use, it'll uh, look for different features that represent bankful. The channel width is just an approximate value just to kind of help the tool out and let it hone in again on that bankful um, elevation. And the flood depth uh, tries to capture the distance of detrending. Um, if you leave the default at minus one, actually what this tool does, it does not try to de uh, detrend out into the flood pane particularly far. Um, it tries to uh, focus its detrending on the in-channel area. The fl flow accumulation threshold, uh, this tool performs um, a kind of classic hyd hydraulic uh, flow accumulation and this is the maximum distance over which it will uh, accumulate uh, flow. And so th what you need to think about here is your spatial resolution of your cells in your DEM. Uh, multiply that by this number to get the approximate distance of channel that this is going to detrend over. So I know that 7000 multiplied by about 3 meter pixel resolution is going to give me the right kind of length of channel here. The outputs are all uh, defaulted for you. You can override those using the browse buttons on the right and the uh, workspace that these outputs get put into is the same workspace as your input DEM. Okay, so this is finished. Um, let's go and have a look at the results. I'm just going to color the uh, detrended DEM here using the same color scheme that I was using for the raw DEM. So I got three things out and added to my map. I've got as the detrended DEM, uh, a bank full polygon, and a flow accumulation line. So the detrended DEM, as I mentioned, is this flattened DEM without the long valley slope. Notice the units here um, are quite different than the absolute uh, units of the raw DEM. The detrended units are meters, but they're on an arbitrary datum. Uh, we center that around 100 for the bank full, um, but uh, we deliberately choose an arbitrary value rather than uh, try to represent where this flattened DEM fits on the real datum. Um, the detraining process uh, takes the bankful elevation as the trend, as the overall valley trend, and so the, the tool has put out a polygon that represents that extent if, as if we flooded the river up to bankful. And as I mentioned, we've got the flow accumulation line. This line's fairly erratic, and uh, we're not going to use it too much in the RBT. We will use it in a subsequent uh, feature and video on creating center lines, but uh, it, it's fairly erratic and bounces around inside the channel, so we don't use that too much. 
So when we zoom in here, you can see that what the detrending has achieved for us is we've pulled out quite a lot of nice features, topographic features in old abandoned meanders and uh, side channels and backwaters. Those are going to be really interesting for other features of the RBT where, <coughs> where we're trying to uh, inundate different areas of the channel. So just a couple of tips and tricks here. Um, you'll notice what I've done on the DEM here is I've actually clipped it to uh, 150 meters around the uh, channel. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can try and detrend much broader out into the floodplain. But if you are having troubles uh, detrending, and certainly if you have a flood a channel that is detached from the floodplain, if it's got levees around it or something like that, you may experience problems with the detrending. And in those situations, it's helpful to clip the channel down. Uh, sorry, clip your DEM down so it um, just takes in the wetted part of the channel and any areas that may be inundated at high flows. So that's the detraining feature of the RBT.